Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinker, and I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As a reminder to all our listeners, we're on Anchor, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and if you're looking for us in the video format, you can find us at the A Drink of Wisdom YouTube channel. Lots to get into. Drink, what's going on with you? Hey, man, you know you know what it is, man. Another another fruitful Friday, you know. We back up in this thing, but um, you know what I got to do, you know, first and foremost, how everything with you and yours over there? Oh, it's good, man. Yourself? Yo, can't complain. You know, we, we, we about to give them what they need. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> the streets waiting on us. Um, we gonna, we see what they don't. Say what they want. Set your plates because it's time to eat. It might literally be time to eat too. And last but not least, <laughs> let's talk some sports, baby. Let's roll, Jay. All right. This is episode six of season three and the NBA cracks down on drawing fouls. The Bucks take on the Rams, and we look ahead to the Saturday slate in college football. We begin with Thursday night football from last night with the Carolina Panthers moving to 3-0, and and the Houston Texans falling to 1-2. and Carolina wins this one 24-9 on the strength of not only Sam Donald's arm, but his legs as well. He threw for over, just over 300 yards and ran for two touchdowns. Uh, the Carolina defense off to a blistering start. They only give up 193 yards to the Texans' offense, which was led by the rookie quarterback Davis Mills playing for the injured Tyrod Taylor. Mills throws for 168, a touchdown. Didn't throw a pick, but he was sacked four times. Got no help from the ground game at all. Meanwhile, one more note for the Panthers. They did have some big injury news last night. Christian McCaffrey with a hamstring injury. He's going to miss at least a couple weeks. And they could have lost their – they may they may well have lost their uh, first-round cornerback from South Carolina, J.C. Horn. But we'll keep keep a watch on that one. Drink, let's, uh, let's start here at 3-0. How about the Panthers? Uh, how big a threat are they, or how how seriously should we take them as a contender thus far? Well, hey, listen. I, I, one thing I would say this: I think we took them um, a lot more of a contender when they had a healthy Christian McCaffrey than they do now. Um, so we're gonna spend these next two games looking to see when you you bring in the the, the backups. And and listen, I know these got uh, Chuba Herbert. He was the man at Oklahoma State. He, you know, one of them dudes came in breaking all types of records. So we're going to see, can he pick up that slack that Christian McCaffrey left behind? Um, that's To me, that's going to be the make or break. I mean, hey, defense is, listen, <laughs> this young defense is, is the seem to be the real deal, folks. I got it. If you want to say week one they played the Jets, I mean, it was Zach Wilson and whoever he threw the ball to. So, we're going to throw that one out the window. Okay, fine. But you got to show some respect for what they did to the Saints. Like, let's keep it real. Yeah. They, 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 they balled the Saints up, the same Saints that balled up the, the Packers in week one. So you got to show some respect for that. And if you, if you want to tell me, hey, last night they played a rookie and, and possibly one of the most horrible teams in the whole NFL last night, um, they should have done that last night. And I would, to that, I would say, I agree. They should have done that last night. But what would, what would we have been saying this morning if they didn't do that last night? Uh, you know, hey, they came out here. Well, I don't know. They ain't no contenders, man. Hey, they couldn't, if you couldn't ball up a, a rookie and a makeshift offensive line and th this running back core that was just so outstanding last night, um, and, and Brandon Cooks, the, j yes. just Brandon Cooks. Like, don't – I mean, I know Miller got a touchdown, but let's keep it real. Look at them stats. Look at Aiken's stats. Like, they weren't world beaters. So, all you had to really compete against was Brandon Cooks and, and, and the quarterback making a few plays. That was it because you didn't have to worry about the run game. I can't even tell you who the other receivers are, et cetera, et cetera. So, they should have done that last night. Even with that said – I do think this team, I think this team really got a good chance of being a contender. Now, like I said, I do caveat that with Christian McCaffrey. I think Christian McCaffrey, we, we didn't talk about this. He's definitely a top, you know, top three back. A lot of people got him top one, you know. Whatever your, your, your opinion is as far as the running backs go in the NFL. But he is definitely one of the best dual threat running backs when it comes to running the ball and catching the ball. And I do think he was a big part of their offense. Why do I think that? Because... The short time he was in the game, he had already carried the ball seven times. And he had already got the ball through to him. You know, um, I want to say it was like four targets. 
I, I thought. Um, okay, so no, it was two targets. All right, so two times. It if you watch the game, you, you can see how involved they wanted McCaffrey in in the game. He was very involved. Sam Donald got to pick and choose when he threw the ball, and and. You know, I'm going to get to his number one target as far as that go. But Christian McCaffrey is the guy that keep them on track, right? Now you don't have him to keep you on track. It's going to be very interesting. I know they got Dallas, and then they got, um, I want to say the next game is like a divisional game after that. It would be very interesting to see what they do from, from here on without Christian McCaffrey. Um, now, the Texans. And I just gotta say something about the Texans. Uh, I mean, they 24 points. I mean, you, you gotta you gotta kind of look at that defense and say it could be worse. Their defense could definitely be worse, especially for a team that has no aspirations to do anything. And did you hear what they said about the the head coach last night on the broadcast? Do you do you do you know the first time that? De what is his name? David David Cutley. David Cully, yeah. Cully. The first time he ever interviewed for a any kind of coaching job was when he interviewed for the head coaching job of the Texans, and he got the job. Imagine he never, that. He never interviewed for any other position, like even as no an defense, oh, no no that. coordinator. Yeah, they was like no coordinator positions. No, he he interviewed for this head coaching job and he got it. Unless I heard them wrong. That's that's what I thought I heard them say. Assum assuming you heard that correctly, that's kind of impressive, don't you think? That, right. I was like, what? <laughs> so I thought that was quite interesting. But, you know, for the sake of not wasting everybody's time, here's the deal. The Panthers defense did what they were supposed to do. Now, I did hear that the, the first round pick, um, J.C. Horn, he hurt his foot and he's possibly out for the rest of the season. Um, and that's going to be a blow to the defense. But... The way Matt ruled, and that this was pure magic. Um, and I and I don't want to take too much thunder on this because I know you had said something about this in the past. The way they scrapped that whole old defense, got rid of the old guys, got rid of everybody, and went and spent the whole draft on defense. Matt Rule might have just started a trend, man. He might have just started something here. I'm just telling you, he might have started something here because you can't tell me the rest. You, we know what the NFL is. It's a copycat league. So I guarantee you next season, we're going to get a team that did what Matt Rule did. Hey, our defense ain't good. Get rid of all these dudes. We just going to draft. We're going to go draft everybody. Brand new, fresh off the lot, new car smell. We want it all. And one year later, you got, what, a top five defense? Well, I think they're number one right now. But they are, yeah. As the season go on, I would think that might fluctuate a little bit. But what you you went from zero to hero in one year? I mean, it's something to be said about that strategy. So you got to give you know Matt Rule his flowers for that, the GM his flowers, um, and then you you know everything else that go along. But yeah, man, I, I think truth be told, it could have been a lot worse for the Texans. I mean, when you look at that final score, it's not pretty, but I thought it was going to be worse. I told you before we started recording, I thought this young man, David Mills, wasn't even going to be able to throw for 100 yards. I thought he was going to be like 89, 89 yards passing and, you know, but he, he, he put up 168. I mean, for a guy that got through in the fire like he did, I think he did about as best as he could. I ain't mad at that. But I think the, the the Panthers was a far superior team in this game. They showed that. And, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, long story short, man, listen, the Panthers seem they have the makings to be a contender. Now I just want to see how they bounce back from the kid. Because I know Christian McCaffrey, they said he might be out, what, about three to four weeks. So I would like to see how they, they hold the fort down until he gets back and then I am concerned about the J.C. Horn injury, but the way that Matt Rule and, and you know the GM that put this team together, they might be okay. They might be able to weather that storm on the defense side of the ball because they're so good at all three levels. But yeah, man, I I, I gotta say they're a contender at this point. Yeah, I think I think we should take them seriously up to a point. 
Um, I think it's way too early at this point to, you know, put them alongside Tampa in that division. I think mm-hmm. Tampa is clearly, you know, they, they got to be looked at as the favorite until um, a team, you know, shows shows otherwise that they can beat them. You know, but, um, <laughs> my, hold on, but my bad, Jay, before you get into the meat and potatoes, um, I just wanted to say, like, because like you just said, it is different levels of contenders. So, like, I don't think they're a Super Bowl contender. But I think they could be a player within the NFC, you know what I'm saying? Make, you know what I'm saying? Ruffle up some feathers. But like you said, they're not the Bucks. I don't even think they're the Rams. But, I, you know, I, let me clarify that a little bit. Yeah, and, and to that point, just to uh, bounce back off that, I, I think they're a wild card team. I think that's about where they are. Um, could they Could they maybe win a playoff game? Uh, maybe they could with the, with the right matchup. You do have to consider this is um, – I think the Saints win last week was pretty eye-opening. Um, but do keep in mind your, your three quarterbacks you played so far are Zach Wilson, uh, Jameis Winston, and now David, Davis, Davis Mills. So, um, not, not a, not an overly impressive group. Um, but, uh, but you do have to, I mean, you got, you can't control who you play. So they, they've taken care of business. Um, this defense is flying around playing lights out. Uh, they're giving up about uh, less than 200 yards a game so far, only 10 points a game. Both of those, uh, both of those are first in the league. And uh, when you look at this schedule, you mentioned it, uh, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, they, they're going to go to Dallas, then they're going to come home and play Philly and Minnesota, and then they go back on the road to the Giants and the Falcons. There's a lot of winnable games there. I mean, there, there isn't one team on that in the next five weeks that you say, oh, they might be in trouble. Now, I'm not saying they win all those games, but I think at minimum, I mean, that looked like that looked. I mean, at at worst, I feel like they you know went three out of five. So at worst, they're going to be six out of two, six and two, um, in the you know in the first eight games. It, it's going to get a little bit tougher down the road. The the, the last three games are going to be difficult. You're going to get uh, you're going to get a, the but oh, last four. Excuse me. You're going to go to Buffalo, then you're going to come back home for Tampa Bay, and then you finish up on the road against the Saints and Bucks. So that's going to be tough, but. You know, with a team like this, with a new quarterback, relatively young team, that's probably almost how you prefer it. You know, get these, you know, get some of these, some of these are some tune up games, you know, particularly like if you see the Falcons in a couple of weeks, like, oh, yeah, I like that. Let's get them. So, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, get Sam Darnold in there more comfortable in this Joe Brady offense. Um, by that time, you know, surely Christian McCaffrey will see him back. Hopefully, at most, he's only out a month and he comes back strong. But you gotta like what they're doing. Uh, to the te- to the Texans side, you know, I gotta say, like, if you t- if you said Houston would be one and two right now, you'd probably feel okay. You know, they I think their season has gone maybe about as well as it could. You come out week one and you surprise. I think you surprise a lot of people just taking it to Jacksonville. Who I'm not saying we thought Jacksonville was gonna be great this year. I certainly did not. But I thought I thought they were, I thought it was gonna be better than Houston though. I, yeah, I did I did as well, and they they got I mean they got beat up pretty good 37-21. Then you play Cleveland. Cleveland's one of the they, they're a top contender in the AFC, and you only lose by ten. And then you know it wasn't great last night, but I mean this is a rookie quarterback, first start. You know Preston a duty with Tyrod Taylor being injured, and um, I gotta say I thought. I thought Davis Webb, you know, handled himself pretty well. I mean, he didn't come out and embarrass himself. We're not doing the Nathan Peterman routine. Who? Davis Mills. Did I say Webb? Yeah, you, you said Webb. Who is that? I keep thinking Davis. No, no, no. That's that, no, yeah, that was a real quarterback. Was a real, yeah, okay, okay. That was a quarterback, yeah. Okay. I think he did play for the Texans, matter of fact. Now that I think about it. But, yes, so it is. It, Davis yeah. Mills was a dude from last night, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, I'm looking at the producer, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Davis Mills. Yeah, he. I thought he played about as well as he could. He took care of the football. They were in the game. You know, it, it's seven six at halftime. He does a little two minute drill thing. Him and Brandon Cooks. They had some nice things working. Um, he didn't get no help from this running game though. Let me tell you. And I want you know what? I'm gonna add this up again just to make sure I'm right. Between Mark Ingram, David Johnson, and Philip Lindsay. You got 15 carries for 37 yards. Now, I get it. Now, this offensive line probably isn't very good, and I get it. You're playing the Carolina Panthers. But, guys, could we help the quarterback any at all? These guys didn't. I mean, these are all three. Now, I know David Johnson. We know he about as washed up as, you know, anything. 
Cardinals, they still down there laughing about that trade. Mark Ingram, he might, you know, he might, you know, be past, he might need an oil change or something. We don't know. He's probably, he's past his prime, maybe. I don't know. He looks smaller to me. I don't know what it is last night. Philip Lindsay, though, this guy who, like, what it is, third, fourth year, maybe, there should still be some good, good tread on those tires. And he out here averaging less than one yard per carry, getting tackled in the open field by rookie cornerbacks. I just, I mean, I just don't understand it. That's just, that's not good enough. And it's going to be, it's going to be hard to win another game. I mean, you will see Jacksonville a little bit later, but I, I will say like, I thought, da- you know, I thought Davis Mills, I'm not saying this is a guy who, oh yeah, give him the keys. They already trying to give Heineke up in Washington the keys after like two weeks. Like that's the dude, man. Like, let's, let's calm down. But I am saying you have a dude who, if nothing else, like he can play in this league. You know, you have a competent guy who, you know, Tyrod Taylor comes back, you know, and maybe you maybe Tyrod's your guy for the season. If he goes down again, I think Davis Mills showed you last night. He's a guy that can compete in this league and, uh, you know, not embarrass you. Obviously, you got to give the kids some more help. You know, this Russian attack was just, you know, anemic last night. And you, you got to be have to be better if you're going to help out a rookie quarterback. The one more note for the Panthers. I think the probably the biggest thing I'd be concerned of with outside the injuries they got to get Robbie Anderson going. That's a guy who, you know, with Sam Darn in New York, like that was probably like maybe the best thing Sam Darn had going was his chemistry with Robbie Anderson. They ain't, they haven't done anything so far. And I know Yo. I know you have DJ Moore and he's excellent. I like what I'm seeing from Terrace Marshall, the rookie from LSU. You know, him and Joe Bray know each other, I, I imagine. But I think well, you're missing out on, you know, at, at minimum, a wide receiver number two that has proven in the past, him and, Son, him and Sam Darnold can get some things done. So I think that's got to be a point of emphasis moving forward, especially with McCaffrey being down for a few weeks. There's going to be some extra targets to go around because uh, I don't think you're going to – now, I do think from the running back position, I think Chuba, uh, Chuba Hubbard and Royce Freeman can hold it down for you in the ground game. I think where you're going to miss McCaffrey, uh, you're going to miss him the most in the receiving game. So I think there – Sam Darnold, he's not, he's going to have, you know, to throw the ball more uh, outside of numbers, get his wide outs involved. But I also say Sam Darnold, the numbers, the numbers really don't blow you away. Like I think he's only thrown for three touchdowns so far, but he's only made, he's only thrown one pick through three games. And we know in New York turnovers were a problem. You're out there seeing ghosts or whatever it is. So (laughs) I I like, I like what he's doing so far. Joe Brady seems to have, uh, you know, got him calmed down. He getting settled in there. And I think, you know, I think Sam Darnold and these guys, I think better days are ahead. And once again, that schedule, they should be able to string quite a few wins together early.